Hi everyone, it's Laura Volpez and today I'm going to share with you a slimline scene card that I created with stamps and dies by Studio Katia. This was also my first time trying the new Distress Oxide in the color Speckled Deck and I loved it. You will see what nice blend I got with my ocean background. As always, if you do enjoy this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and leave a comment in the comment section down below. And if you haven't already, you can subscribe for more card making inspiration. And now let's get started. I started by doing some die cutting off camera. This is some watercolor cardstock by Spectrum Noir that I die cut with the dotted slimline set to dies. These are part of the new release and I obtained two panels. The dotted rectangle will be the base for my card, whereas the scalloped rectangle here will be the background for my ocean scene. I'm going to do some ink blending using Distress Oxides and it was my first time using the new Speckled Egg Distress Oxide by Ranger. I was really excited and I have to say that I really love the way this ocean background turned out. I started with Speckled Deck and then I moved on to Salty Ocean and the last color that I am ink blending here is Chipped Sapphire. Distress oxides blend really easily and in order to get an even smoother transition between shades I'm always going back and forth with those two colors in the transition area to make sure that I get a nice and smooth gradient. And as I said, I really love this color combination, I'm sure I'll be using it for more ocean backgrounds and scene cards. Once I was done ink blending, I also decided to add a little bit more detail to this background, so I added a few water droplets from a distress sprayer and I blotted off the excess with a microfiber cloth. I created some sparkly droplets using my Gansai Tambi Starry palette and also a few more droplets using my distress oxides in the same colors that I used to ink blend. I pressed the ink pads on my glass mat, I activated the inks with a little bit of water and then I am using a small paintbrush to create the droplets. Adding little details like these droplets with water or with something sparkly adds such a fun touch to your backgrounds and is something that I really love to do, especially for my ocean backgrounds and here you can see the result against the light. I decided to also create a sandbank and so I combined the trimmings borders dies with the same scalloped rectangle die from the slimline dotted set 2 by Studio Katia. I die cut some more watercolor cardstock by Spectrum Noir and I did some super quick ink blending using antique linen and vintage photo distress oxides. I am using some Lodak tape on my fingers so that I don't leave any fingerprints on this panel and then like I did for my ocean background I am going to create a few droplets using my Distress Oxides as well as another color of those Ganzai Tambistari colors and here is the final result. Next I started working on my images and for today's card I decided to combine two of my favorite stamp sets by Studio Katia, the Jossom stamp set and the Under the Sea stamp set. I'm stamping the images with Flagstone ink by Spectrum Noir on Nina Solar White 110 pound cardstock and then I'm going to do some coloring with my Illustrator alcohol markers. I did stamp quite a few images today, I didn't expect to use them all, actually I generally stamp way more than I use but it's okay because I don't like to have to go back and color images towards the end of the card making process when I may realize that I needed more than I thought so I always stamp more and if I have any leftovers I just keep them in the stamp packaging and I will use them in a future project but actually for today I used most of the images that I stamped and colored. However, I will not be sharing the entire coloring process with you because otherwise the video will be way too long, but I will talk you through the basic technique that I'm using and then on the blog post that is linked in the description box down below, you will find the list of all the markers that I used, so you can use that as a reference. The way that I am coloring the images is I am using three markers to do my shading. I started with my lightest marker and I used that to block the shadows in the areas where I think my image would be darker. 
In this case, because this is an underwater scene, I am assuming that the light is coming from above, so the shadow areas will be in the lower part of the images, whereas the highlights will be at the top of the images. Once the shadow areas are blocked in, I went in with my darker marker and I basically just went over those same areas and now I am coming in with my mid-tone marker and I am blending everything out towards the highlights. I am making sure to leave enough space for my lighter marker that I am going to use to fill in the highlight areas as well as that little gap that I had left blank between my shadows and the edge of the image. As I said, I will not show you the entire coloring process, so I just wanted to focus on this image here and tell you what my technique is and I hope you also enjoyed a little bit of a more slow paced coloring part for this video. Do let me know in the comments down below. Once the coloring was over, I die cut all the images with the coordinating dies and again a reminder that I have a list of all the markers that I used in the blog post that is linked in the description box down below, so you can use that as a reference. Next I used another of the dies in the dotted slimline set 2 dies by Studio Katia and I used it to die cut a panel out of my ocean background. My initial idea for this card was to create a shaker card but then I decided to keep it a little bit more simple and I will just go for an inlay die cut effect. You could skip this step but I think that adding this type of detail also creates a bit more interest on a card. At this point everything was ready pretty much so I could go ahead and assemble my scene. I also die cut the same scallop rectangle die that I used to create my ocean scene out of some heavyweight white cardstock and I did this just to add a tiny tad of subtle dimension to my card. This is definitely an extra step that you could skip or if you wanted even more dimension you could instead mount these panels on some foam tape but I wanted to keep this flat so that mailing is a little bit easier. I am using Studio Katia liquid glue to glue everything down because that gives me a little bit of time to move things around and get a precise alignment and then once my sandbank is also adhered at the bottom of my ocean I can go ahead and glue down this panel on my card base. Next is the fun part which is creating the scene and again I'm using Studio Katia liquid glue also for this part of the card making and I'm also using those tiny reverse tweezers by Ike Success which make it so much easier to deal with small die cuts. I am trying to create interest on the scene by overlapping several elements like the starfish with the stone, the coral with the seaweed and that yellow fish with the other seaweed on the other side of the card. Once the scene is complete I can go ahead and adhere my sentiment and today I opted for a die cut sentiment. The die that I used is part of the coordinating dies to the new Flourishing Note stamp set by Studio Katia. This is another gorgeous set from the new release and the coordinating dies have the die that cuts this beautiful hello scripty sentiment as well. I finished off the card with my iridescent bubbles and the tiny iridescent bubbles also by Studio Katia and then I added just a few details with a white gel pen. Here is the finished result. This card was very fun to put together and I definitely loved the cute critters, the sparkle and those iridescent bubbles were just the perfect finishing touch.